It's the move every Little League coach teaches. Runner on first, nobody out, lay down a bunt. It feels like smart baseball, a selfless play, a get em over get em in classic. But what if I told you that statistically, bunting almost always lowers your chances of scoring? In this video, we're diving into the numbers behind bunting, using run expectancy, run probability, and the run expectancy matrix to explain why modern teams are putting the bat back on their shoulders. For decades, baseball strategy has leaned on the bunt to manufacture a run. You move the runner over, you get them into scoring position, and you give the next guy a chance to drive that base runner in. But here's what that logic ignores. Outs are a finite resource. You only get 27 of them. Giving away one for free? That's a big deal. Enter the run expectancy matrix. A chart built from years of MLB data that shows the average number of runs scored from every base out situation. Let's look at two scenarios. Scenario A, a runner on first with no outs. The run expectancy matrix tells us that your expected runs are 0.831. In scenario B, let's look at a runner on second with one out after a successful sack bunt. Your expected runs, now 0.644. After a successful bunt, moving the runner from first to second, with no outs to one out, you actually decrease your chances of scoring runs by bunting. You traded an out, your most valuable asset as an offense, for a .2 run expectancy drop. So what looked like a smart play, statistically, was a mistake. So let's talk about run expectancy versus run probability. Here's where it gets interesting. Run expectancy tells you the average number of runs that should score from a specific situation. That's what we're applying with RE24. Run probability tells you the chance of scoring a single run. So yes, bunting can slightly increase the probability of scoring one run, occasionally. So that's why you still see it in tie games in the ninth, extra innings in leagues where they have the new runner on second base rule, and a small ball matchup in a playoff-like environment. But in most cases, especially early in games, teams aren't just trying to score one run. They're trying to score multiple runs. And bunting statistically kills rallies. The data is clear. Bunting does not equate to smart offense. And MLB teams have caught on. Here's the proof. In 1990, teams averaged 1.2 sack bunts per game. In 2025, that number has dropped to below 0.2 per game. Many teams will go weeks without a single sack bunt. They've replaced bunts with hit and runs, aggressive base running, and deep lineups that just swing away. Because in today's game, giving away and out to move a guy around just isn't worth it. And teams have figured this out. Now to be fair, there are a few situations where bunting can still be the smart play. First, late innings in a must-win tie game, where you just need a single run. Second, a speedster with elite bunting skills versus a poor defensive third baseman. Three, safety squeeze or drag bunts used to surprise the defense. Or four, if you think that the hitter has a higher chance of getting out than getting on base, it may be acceptable to bunt. These are strategic exemptions, not everyday plays. The bunt is no longer a foundational tool. It's a surgical instrument used in very specific situations. And one type of bunt we have not talked about yet is bunting for a hit. While sacrifice bunts are mostly extinct, there's one version of the bunt that still works, and smart teams love it, and that's bunting for a hit. This is a completely different animal. You're not giving up an out, you're trying to get on base, especially when the defense aligns in a way that allows you to. When it works, against shifted infields or deep third basemen, or surprise situations when the defense isn't ready and no one may be expecting it. What the data shows. The league-wide success rate for bunt for hit attempts sits around 40 to 50 percent, but elite bunters can get that up to 60 percent. That upper number is almost double most hitters' batting averages. And run expectancy actually rises in these cases, because you don't give up an out, you get an additional runner on, and you force the defense to play tighter next time, which can lead to the infield shifting in, limiting their defensive range that now gives the hitter more space to get a hit in their next at bat. Teams that emphasize this, like the Razor Guardians, weaponize bunting as a pressure tactic, not a concession. So if you have a fast, smart, and a hitter with bat control, 
Bunting for a hit isn't dead, it's just evolved. Additionally, the college and high school level are a different world. At lower levels of the game, things change. Your defense isn't as reliable. Pitchers are a little bit less consistent, and bunts can actually work a little bit more often. In high school or college, you might see more infield chaos, less ability to turn double plays, and value in forcing the defense to execute. So while our data says don't bunt in the majors, context matters. In amateur ball, a well-executed bunt can still flip a game. I just wouldn't personally make it your entire offensive philosophy. Want data to back up your decisions? Whether you're a coach designing smarter strategies or a player looking to improve, PitchLogic helps you make informed decisions. Track velocity, spin rate, and your release point in real time with a smart baseball that connects to your phone. Use code SIMPLE for $25 off and start thinking like a smart front office. So let's recap. Should you ever bunt? Here's what the numbers say. Sacrifice bunting usually decreases your chances of scoring. Giving up and out drops your run expectancy in most scenarios, especially early in the game. Run expectancy is more important than run probability. Unless you're in a tight late game, playing for just one run typically isn't worth the cost of a single out. Smart teams rarely bunt. Across Major League Baseball, bunts have nearly vanished, replaced by power, OBP, and better run maximizing tactics. But there are still exceptions. Late innings, runner on second base in the new extra inning rule, weak contact hitters, or in the olden days, pitchers at the plate, sometimes a bunt may be the best option. Bunting for a hit is still alive and well. Fast, savvy hitters who can drop down a bunt for a hit force the defense to adjust and can turn a dead ball skill into a strategic weapon. And context matters. In youth, college, or small ball environments, Bunting can still be effective, but even there, it should be situational, not automatic. And hey, if you'd like to support Simple Saber Metrics, check out our merch. You can find it on our website or in the store tab right here on the channel. Every purchase helps us bring you more deep dives into baseball stats and strategy. And hey, if you like this video breakdown, check out more of our videos on Leverage Index, batting order optimization, and other predictive analytics in baseball. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next week on Simple Sabermetrics.